Washrooms are down the hall. The acoustics is very good in here, is it not? my weekend. We have no electronic speaking devices. In other words, we, we don't, we're not using mics or anything like that. So we would please refrain from small talk as much as possible in order to hear the speakers, please. Out of respect. Okay, everyone. Central North Division, Fall Evaluation and humorous speech contest has begun. My name is Charles Chapman. I'm the division governor. And I want to have a good time. So I just sit back, relax, and enjoy this with you. It's always fun. Speaking of fun, we have our 2013 World Champion as our contest chair today, Toastmaster, Mr. Prez Severi.
contestant number one, Kirkling Welch. Kirkling Welch, contestant number one. Contestant number two, Jesse Graham. Jesse Graham, contestant number two. Contestant number three, Jay Halim. Jay Halim, contestant number three. Contestant number four, Brian County. Brian County, contestant number four. <coughs> contestant number five, Sherry Rainey. Sherry Rainey. Contestant number five. In order for our evaluation contestants to compete, we need someone to speak for them. Myron Russell, Chronicles of a Sneaker Head. Chronicles of a Sneaker Head, Myron Russell. Michael Jordan has the ball. He comes off the screen from Scottie Pippen. He sets back and he, he shoots the game winning 17 foot jumper. The crowd is stunned. They're amazed. The Bulls have just won another NBA championship. The crowd goes crazy. Can you see it? Four seconds on the clock. Kobe Bryant crosses over his defender. Defender. He lobs the ball to Shaquille O'Neal for the game-winning dunk. The Lakers have just won a third NBA championship. They three-peat. They three-peat. The crowd goes wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kobe. Shaq. Can you see it? Five seconds on the clock. LeBron comes from the weak side of the court and he blocks Tony Parker's shot. He gathers the ball and he races out the other end of the court. He head fakes his defender and he shoots the game winning three point shot. The crowd is stunned. They can't believe it. The Heat have two peat. They've two peat. It's a sudden silence and then there's an uproar. <laughs> Can you see it? Now, if you guys were in this audience, if you were at these games, watching these monumental events, what would you be focusing on? What would grab your attention? Maybe you would be celebrating with your friend in the stands, jumping up and down in celebration, texting someone on your phone saying, I can't believe this. I'm going to make all this money. I can't believe it. <laughs> Maybe you would be seeing the players in the, on the court celebrating and happy for them. Or maybe you would see the confetti coming down and pondering upon this great monumental moment. Well, if you ask me, if you ask me what, what would I be focusing on, I would say the player's shoes. Now, you guys may say, Myron, what in the world are you talking about? Why would you be focusing on the player's shoes? <coughs> There's tons of other things that is going on this great monumental moment. Well, let me explain. I'm what you call a modern day sneakerhead. A sneakerhead is a person that loves shoes to the greatest extent. Yes, deals are important. I want to make sure my family is well taken care of. However, I love shoes almost more than anything. <laughs> now, these are not just regular shoes that you can get from the store, like for example, some of you have gym shoes on today. You may say, I need some gym shoes. Let me go to the store. Let me try on these shoes. I may need one or two pairs of shoes. And let me go to the register and pay for them. I'm not talking about those kind of shoes. I'm talking about the kind of shoes that are very exclusive and very limited. Either you have a connection of someone that works for the store and can give you these specific limited shoes, 
or you have a specific program that if the shoes are released online, you have a program that is automatically going to put the shoe in your cart. These are very hard to get shoes, seriously. Now, as you guys can see, I only have two feet on my body. However, I have, in real life, almost 50 exclusive shoes. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Myron, <laughs> this sounds kind of childish. Why, why in the world would you be buying all these shoes? You're wasting your money. You should be focusing on making your money work for you. Investing in things such as maybe stocks and bonds, CDs, or even acquiring a house. That's something that can basically gain you equity and stretch out your money in the long run. Now, I say to you, yes, I dabble in some of those things. I think those things are important. I see the benefit in those things. However, let me tell you the benefit of the shoes that I buy. As I mentioned, these exclusive or limited shoes are not sold, well, they're not sold in bulk. Now, within the Chicago one area, maybe only two or three stores will release these shoes. That means that upon release date, once the store opens, it probably sells out within two or three minutes because people are basically camping out to get these very limited exclusive shoes. Not only that, once the shoe sells out, retail value may be $220. The resale value may actually be anywhere between $400 and $3,000. Yes, Toastmasters and guests, I mean $3,000. Now, let's look at this from a financial perspective. We're talking about a potential payback period of anywhere between well, a payback, potential payback period of about one day, depending upon if it's in high demand by a buyer. Also, in regards to a return on, on investment, we're talking about anywhere between 150% and 900%. Just imagine if you go into a store, you pay $220, and someone is willing to give you $3,000 for something you paid only 200 bucks for. You get my point? <laughs> now, let's put three seconds back on the clock. No, you know what? I'll give you guys five seconds. I'll give you guys some time to think about this. It's game seven of the NBA championship. The star player is racing down the other end of the court. He pulls up and he hits the game winning shot. What do you see now? Yes, you may still see the confetti coming down. You may still be celebrating, but do you see the shoes now? <laughs> Do you see the point I was trying to, to grasp or trying to come across in regards to that return on investment? Toastmasters and guests, you guys may never become sneakerheads. You guys may never care about these gym shoes I speak of. However, I would not be surprised if I saw one of you in a Nike store in the near future. Thank you. <laughs>
no about five times, and then she says, well, I'll help you, so. Yeah. So, uh, have you completed any speeches, or is this your first speech? Um, I had one speech before this speech. It's quite a joke, I'd say. Quite a joke. Now, is basketball a bigger hobby, or those 3,000 shoes that you wear? <laughs> I, my hobby is mainly gym shoes. I, sometimes when I, even when you have certain shoes that you may wear, even if they're worn, they're still worth a lot of money. Certain ones. So it's some that I've worn, I say, 10, 15 times during good condition. I can sell them for $700, $800 if I need some money. Seriously. How many pairs of shoes do you have at home? About 50. 50 pairs. So just do the math. If, if they're, if even the minimum is four hundred dollars times fifty. You get no <laughs> So I, I, they're all insured. They're everything. <laughs> what brought you to Toastmasters? Um, well, I'm a project manager, and basically, I needed something. Well, not needed, but I wanted something to basically put up my uh, PDU um, because I, I just started working for Blue Cross Blue Shield about six months ago. So. I just felt that would be good to put on my feet. Now, have you noticed any change in your outer lives since you joined Toastmasters? How has Toastmasters impacted your work? How has it helped you? Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I give most of my, well, I wouldn't say speeches, but presentations via WebEx. So even in my business life and also personal life, I won't give too much speeches like this in this kind of format. So, but I mean, it does give you more confidence in regards to speaking and communicating with people better. So, I would say that. I'd say there is a market of combining the sneaker head with the speaker. <laughs> no I see, see a market right there, yeah. selling shoes from the stage. <laughs> uh, well, your favorite quote is, when the grass is cut, the snakes will show. <laughs> Did you mean the sneakers will show? <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to say that. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, maybe it's, it's a story for another individual. <laughs> That's another speech. <laughs> How do you come up with your title, Chronicles of the Sneaker? I deal with from initiation to you know managing the stakeholders expectations and closing out the project, making sure all the deliverables are met and going to the next project. How did you feel? What was the experience like being a target speaker? Well, as I said before, I didn't want to even give the speech at all because I my first speech, it, it, I just, I got some of my material, and then I, I kept going. But then the evaluator, it was like she kept saying a lot of things that I didn't like. Like she didn't just say like maybe you know three or four things. She said like twenty different things. <laughs> so, like, Seriously, so I'm like I'm not coming back anymore. And then she hadn't seen me in a while, so she called me up and she's like, "Do you want to give this speech?" I'm like, "I'm not giving it nothing anymore." <laughs> and, but now, I mean, I, now I really don't care anymore because basically, you know. 
I feel as long as I know my material, yeah. for the most part, then you know whatever they say, I can care less. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I, I say things. Um, sorry. About that. <laughs> Well, it's very good that you don't care because you have five people walking in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I just walk out the room. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm nervous. laughs> if you could give one advice for anybody who's really scared to come up here or on any stage and speak, what would be that thing? I mean, the biggest thing is knowing the material. Um, basically, I'm not really too too much worried about the audience and what people are thinking. I'm worried about basically the material I'm delivering. And as long as I know that, I can deliver it. People can be jumping up and down, just doing anything. It doesn't really affect me. It's basically if I know what I'm going to say, that's the only thing I'm really worried about. And so making sure that, you know, if you're giving five or seven minutes, that's a lot of material to basically remember. So that was the, the biggest thing. So anything else you should be a, a breeze, but some people are like basically stage fright. So. Well, Myron, thank you very much for being our target speaker. And we have a gift from you. It's maybe, a, is it sneakers? Yeah. <laughs> we may have a yeah. for it. Cool. Get to that. Make sure it's Jordan's. <laughs> Toastmasters. We are ready to hear from our first evaluation contestant. So at this time, I want to make a quick announcement before we leave. They're still writing? No. Oh. In the intercession, quick intercession, just so you know that the bathrooms are down the hall. Right, the jobs down the hall. On the end, on the left. On the end, on, on the left, and on the right side. Yes, Pat. Could you please tell us who she is? That Myron kept referring to she. Oh. oh. Who's the woman with <laughs> the question? <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, it's a very sensitive. <laughs> Rachel. Uh, Rachel. Let's give her a round of applause. She was. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Thank you very much. I thought they're still in the building. <laughs> when they said go to the other room, usually they escort them to the closest possible room. But we have a big uh, CDA in this specific building. It takes a while. To walk the red line. <laughs> There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timers, please give me a signal when that minute is up. After all contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their bouts. We will now begin the evaluation speech contest. Contestant number one, Kirkling Welch. Kirkling Welch, contestant number one. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, any guests, and especially Myron, what a great speech, Chronicles of Sneaker Ant. I was confused on what that was before, but by then I knew what it was. And the intro was captivating. Whenever you say Michael Jordan, three seconds left on the clock, and then you run in Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, really painted the picture there. Lots of imagery, use hand motions, crowd noise, that's great. Really got everybody. And then you use the capture question. What were you focusing on when they were scoring that shot? Everybody's like, the game winning shot. A lot of people like cell phones, Twitter now these days. And you were focusing on their shoes. So it's later we'll find out that there's value in the shoes, plus you also like the shoes. You know, you went into what is a sneakerhead? A sneakerhead is somebody that wants exclusive shoes. Something that's very hard to get, might be sold in two to three retail stores in Chicago, has 
retail value that's 220, that's over lunch shows, but the real value in being a sneakerhead is the return on your money they get like that. If you take your time and patience, you get three to four thousand dollars, which is a staggering investment if you want to put in an effort. You go into, okay, well now you know what a sneakerhead is, and you know why I love being a sneakerhead. Put yourself back into the game. Three seconds left, five seconds left. Hey, you know, they're dribbling, take the shot, score. What were you focusing on? You said you're probably focusing on those sneakers, and I'll see you at the Nike store. <laughs> now, I guess, I guess you did a lot of great things. The hand gestures, the eye contact. You, know, you could use the floor a little bit more, but I, I would say you did overall great. You had eye, uh, eye contact, the humor, and everything that along, went along with that, with that. As a Toastmaster, I believe the most critical part of giving a speech is getting the criticism back, which is constructive criticism to help you build as a Toastmaster. And in the opening, you had a couple stutters. And this is what I say you could do to help with that. Come up here, take a deep breath, get the nerves out. As soon as you're ready, go for it. Really focus on practicing your beginning and nailing that, because that makes you get loose and be more effective throughout the speech. Now, you recovered quickly, and you did a great job doing that. You know, the other thing that I would say is make the speech a little bit more personal. You talked about being a sneakerhead, but I would say bring some examples if you didn't sell those shoes, or some pictures at least. Um, go up to somebody and say, now, were you focusing on those shoes? Were you focusing on those shoes? And just draw people back in. Overall, you did a great job. I got a new appreciation for sneakerheads, and I want to see you continue to progress. Thank you. Thank you. Contestant number two, Jesse Graham. Jesse Graham, contestant number two. <laughs> Contestant chair, fellow Toastmasters, and guests. Byron, where are you? There are you. <laughs> Confessions of a shoe hound. <laughs> Great title. Right off the bat, you get people engaged. You give them a visual imagery of what you're going to talk about. Plus, my son's a shoe house, so that piqued my interest because I know how much dollars you sit out. <laughs> Good use of metaphor. You start out your introduction very well. The ball to Michael Jordan. Boom. Kobe Bryant. Boom. LeBron James. That gives you credibility. You know what you're talking about. Then you set the scene up. What were you looking at? We won money, but what were you looking at? Well, you tell us. You point out a visual imagery and show them in our mind that the introduction sets up the story. You make a complete connection with your audience by bringing them into the story, making them visualize their past. They're now with you, so that's a very good use of point. Uh, you're organized. Your introduction <coughs> sets you up the body. You get key indications of what you're going to talk about. Exclusiveness, limited, the hookup. You know, that's the type of information you're saying, you got something I want to know. So you make your listener lean in, 
pay attention to. That's the hook. Very good use of that. And then you tell about the payoff. You have very good use of metaphors. One in your speech, the confession of a crackhead. <laughs> but you gave value. You gave value. You told us in our, your story that you may be looking at it from this perspective, but if you look at it from this other perspective, if I go in here and invest this amount of time, I can get a huge payoff. Now, I'm starting to think, well, basketball may have a little bit of thing. But the thing that you didn't do there, that you could have really got us in, is understood the connection. Why Jordan? Why Kobe? Why LeBron? Makes those sneakers that uh, increase in value so much. That gives us a little bit more uh, uh, financial incentive to go out there and perhaps maybe take a little time and uh, go out and spend a couple of minutes on those mornings where it's cold and line up there to get the payoff. Uh, you finish with the good replay of your story. Once your introduction set you up, your body explained what you did. You then took your audience back to visualize their payoff. You said, now come the next championship, how will you be looking at the game? You'll be looking at what you should have did to really finish it off is the shoes. And I don't care of those $500 sneakers, but I know the value of those are too big to bring into the store. Excellent storyteller, <laughs> did everything. I enjoyed it. I got to go back home and make my son clean out his clothes. <laughs> Contestant number three, Jay Halim. Jay Halim. Contestant number three. Good evening. Kirkland, great introduction to illustrate the setting in which you really created a very nice ambiance. You painted a picture that was very emotionally impacting with three seconds on the clock and the different characters. And it was a good example for the point we're trying to make, which is the shoe that the player wears is stacked at the bottom from the ground up. And it's important for a number of reasons because of performance, agility, a player needs a great shoe and you really can't put a price tag on a designer shoe from any company that makes it because it's how you play the game with the shoe that determines if you're going to win the game or not and the passion, the dreams that you have in your heart. And I think it was a good point to illustrate how when stacking it, it's a drive and it's a passion and in life it doesn't matter what you should or shouldn't do it's what you have in your heart that you move forward with and you grow with and that that actually uh, produces a fruit one piece of feedback i would give to you is 
that when you talked about the financial analysis portion, I got kind of lost because you were you were listing numbers that were relating to the analysis <coughs> and were kind of fast. However, overall, I believe it was a impactful speech that showcased a lot of good information to prove a point you were trying to make. Thank you. Contestant number four, Brian County. Brian County, contestant number four. Where's Myron here? Myron, okay. I loved your speech. I loved your speech so much, I almost loved it more than sneakers. And you love sneakers. Let's talk about three things that you did very, very well. It was interesting, when I was putting together the evaluation, I found three areas that you had extreme strengths in were those same three areas you could use a little bit of help to even make those stronger. The first area was his opening. Did you notice how Myron came out? He set the scene right away. He put us into the basketball scene. And it was a great move. It was not timid sitting up here. He jumped right on it. And the opening is your chance to grab the audience. You only have a couple of seconds before people start wandering off or not paying attention. So you did that very good. Now, a way that you can improve that opening, you had a great line that was, imagine you were at that game. I would have loved to have seen that line at the very beginning. You could say, Imagine you're sitting front court at the Bulls game in 1997, and Michael Jordan is five feet away from you. Now you're really putting the audience right up next to Michael Jordan. The next area was body language. You notice how Myron wasn't afraid to use his hands? He was up here, he was shooting baskets, he was doing alley-oops. <laughs> that was great. It's a great way to connect with the audience and get them involved. Now, you can, to improve that, every once in a while you can put your hands down. You're, you're dominant with your hands, but to kind of give it a emphasis when you want it, you have to also relax them sometimes. It's kind of weird when you're practicing your speech, you can get used to just standing still and putting them down. And then when you get up here, you use them a little bit. And the last area, was the you. The you is the most important part of the speech. It's a way to connect with the audience. You had some great you questions, like we talked about. Imagine you were at that game. Or, um, you might not be interested in this, but, so you kept bringing the audience back to it. And there's a way to connect with the audience even more, and that would be to incorporate your love of sneakers with not just the audience's maybe, maybe not love of sneakers, but their love of something else. Does everyone have something like Myron's love of sneakers? Prez's, for Prez's Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> we all have something, so tie that back 
into it and say, now what is your sneakers? And imagine that. And now you've got the audience thinking about their sneakers and your part. We overall, fantastic speech and showing some guts to get up here in front of five evaluators. Do a great job. Thanks, Mark. Thank Contestant number five, Sheryl Rainey. Sheryl Rainey, contestant number five. Mr. Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters and guests, forget gold, forget apple. The greatest investment now are sneakers. <laughs> we learned that from the sneakerhead. And Myron, <laughs> I found your speech to be very entertaining and very enlightening. My sons probably wished I'd heard that speech when they, when I was buying their sneakers, <laughs> because maybe I would have been more willing to spend the money. I love your vocal variety. I especially liked your hushed yell of the crowd. I liked your movement. What I would have liked more with the movement, and I'm not even a basketball fan, but I would have loved when you talked about that jump shot that you actually jumped, or when you were talking about Kobe and the dribbling, that you gave us a little dribbling as he went back and forth, because that would have really brought us into the tension of the game. I could tell that you have a passion, a passion not just for basketball, but also a passion for the sneakers. And one way for us to know that you had that passion is a longer eye contact. Really look at us in the eye and just let us know. I love my sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> I stand in line to buy my sneakers overnight. Mm -hmm. I, I really learned a lot. I never thought about sneakers as being an investment. So, and I wonder how you realized that that was a great investment and not just the, the dream of a teenage kid. So, while I don't think I'm going to sell my goal <laughs> and switch to investing in sneakers, what I would like to do is bring together a group of investors and you can come and do your presentation. I'll get a cut from the set. <laughs> and when you come to do that presentation, Again, give us that eye contact. Continue with your vocal variety and the hush bell of the crowd. Give us some more movement, some jump shots, some dribble. And I believe we'll make a lot of money <laughs> from you being a sneakerhead. <laughs>
semester, all ballots have been collected. At this time, we will hear an exciting announcement from our Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, Donna Weston. Before for Toastmasters events. Uh, South Cape here. Yeah, it's on here. And it's actually in your program, too. Uh, yes, it at the is. end of the program. All right. Well, I hope to see you all there singing. <laughs> Let's take a 10 minute break and reconvene for the humorous contest. Refreshments in the back, bathrooms down the road. 